Hi, my name is Moshumi Ghosh. Um, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in practice in Los Angeles, California. And my specialty is sex therapy. I work with individuals and couples um, who come into my office generally because they have some sort of sexual problem um, that's either affecting their relationship. Um, usually it's their relationship or relationships. Um, sometimes it's work, sometimes it's family. Um, and then, you know, stuff that comes up because of it. Generally speaking, my belief is that sexuality and sex, when there's, when there's problems with it, they are because of something that's psychological that is being expressed outwardly. So um, it's definitely a mind and body connection. So there's something happening um, psychologically up here, but that's being expressed through the body. So my belief is that mind and body are definitely connected. Um, the reason I got into this field is because I find that there's a lot of people that have a hard time talking about sex. And if we can't talk about sex and sexual relations, then how can we expect to communicate in the relationship? So that's basically what my, my goal is, is to help couples and individuals talk about sex and sexuality in a way that um, allows them to feel comfortable and expressive so they don't have to feel, they don't have to avoid certain topics because they're, they feel like they're not knowledgeable about it. So education and just sort of normalizing sex is one of the main reasons that I got into this field. Some of the main things that come up in um, therapy, um, a lot of people come to me with arousal problems. So I would say that's probably the, one of the most common issues that come up. For example, a man might come with um, erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation. And when these aren't medical based, when they don't have a, a medical root, um, and they're psychological, a lot of times it has to do with anxiety. And at the core of anxiety is the inability to let go. Um, a lot of times people are really focused on erection, orgasm, ejaculation, and they're forgetting to enjoy the journey, which is, you know, this whole sensual journey. And it's not about the outcome, it's about everything the entire journey, all of it, from the minute you meet someone and you make eye contact to the minute you, you know, find yourself in bed. And it's an ongoing process. So with that example, um, I might, I always assign homework for um, clients and I might accompany them um, somewhere. For example, one really important, one really good um, type of treatment for um, some of these erectile issues, sexual issues, and I hate calling them dysfunctions, really, but um, because my philosophy is is that it's not really a dysfunction, that it's some sort of um, problem that you're having now. It's an ebb and a flow, so it's going to come back. It's going to start working again. Um, something that I might encourage is, is for someone to go to yoga. Yoga happens to have a lot of great mind and body qualities. Um, yoga tends to slow one down, um, makes them learn how to focus, get focus on you know, certain things that they're doing, and um, helps them kind of get back into the moment and into their body. A lot of these issues are because people are totally stuck in their bodies, in, in their minds, excuse me, stuck up here and totally disconnected down here. So yoga is a great way to sort of break that. A lot of people are uncomfortable going to yoga or trying something new or trying something different, so I might even accompany them to a yoga class. Um, another common issue is arousal disorder in women. Now it's a little bit different in women. Um, a lot of times when it pops up in women, it has to do with um, self-esteem, um, feeling insecure about their body, so body image is very common with women, um, and sometimes just feeling like they're inexperienced, like no one's ever taught them how to have an orgasm or what it really means. So something that I might do with a woman is I might accompany her 
to say a sex shop and um, you know kind of explore all the different toys that are out there getting her sort of more acquainted with what's available to her and the goal for her would be to get more in touch with her body and in tune with her body women women's um, genitalia and, and anatomy is internal it's sort of inside so when you look in the mirror you're not necessarily going to see it so um, learning to be comfortable with it is is often a big step for women and and so I might accompany her to a sex shop in fact I did that recently I accompanied um, a group of people after a workshop because it's kind of a scary thing to go to a, a sex shop with all these you know um, these toys that you have no idea what they're for and so um, it can be intimidating, it can be scary, embarrassing and so going with a group can be kind of helpful too because then it's kind of like everybody's in it together and it's fun so we, we make it light and fun, we loosen it up a little bit. Um, another issue that I deal with often are what comes up in, in dating issues with single individuals and that often has to do with also self-esteem, um, you know, lacking some confidence, self-confidence, and, um, you know, developing social skills. So I might, you know, accompany in the same sort of way to, you know, different social places just to see how that person is interacting with people when they're out and about so that I can actually give them feedback when we come back into the office of what I saw and how they were interacting. For example, a man who's trying to meet women and comes to my office every single week and says, I don't know what it is, I'm not meeting the right woman, I go out all the time, I'm involved in this and I'm involved in that, but for some reason I can't meet women. Well, I might accompany him or just you know, be a fly on the wall, so to speak, when he's at a social event and um, just sort of see how he interacts with women and then give him feedback on it. So those, I think, are the three main issues that I see on a daily basis um, in my practice and those would be some sort of non-traditional ways of, of dealing with it like actually breaking them out of the mold so we can sit there and talk about something for hours and the change won't actually happen so so um, in order to sort of elicit change I believe that getting out there and accompanying the client in, in life activities is probably one of the best ways.